Hey y'all, we'll be talking about make files in this video. Make files are super important in X 281 because they automate the compilation process, which you'll want to do on all the projects and labs. Uh, they, they can also automate a variety of other tasks such as directory manipulation. So if you had some files you wanted to delete every time you ran the make file, they can do that. Uh, they can also do file packaging, which will be very useful for you when you submit to the autograder. But these, these functionalities extend into your, your education and your career beyond, beyond EX 281, especially just viewing the make file as a process of automation, which will be very important to you, uh, no matter what you're doing in computing. Let's dive in. Okay, we're going to talk a bit about what a make file can do, and then we'll talk about what you need to change in the make file to make it work for you. So, uh, Let's imagine that I've, I've done lab1.cpp. Well, we don't have to imagine. I did do lab1. Um, and I want to compile it. So I'm going to compile it just using G++. There's a couple warnings. That's fine. I've got this lab1 executable that I can run. Great. Seems uh, like that's working. Uh, but one important thing to note here is that this command line string is just, you know, that's just basic compilation, right? So if I wanted to use the all of the flags that we provide on the autograder for compilation, then it's going to take me a long time to compile uh, every time I want to. So um, we'll be able to see that in a second. I'm going to type make, which is going to compile my program uh, because of how I've set up the make file. And you can see here that you know there's a lot of flags, right? This would take a long time to type out if you're going to do it for every time that you compiled your program. Um, and now I've still got this lab one executable. You can see that that was the last thing that was generated by the the uh, the make script. So I can still run that, and it's still working. Great. So the flags, uh, it's not super important. You know what they are. They do things like turning warnings into errors, uh, being strict about type conversions, this sort of thing. Um, this is an optimization flag. Uh, but the important point is that we need you to have all of these things uh, if you want to ensure that your code is going to compile on the autograder. And make is the easiest way for you to do that instead of typing it out. OK. So I've got a bunch my now my my directory is a bit messy. I've got this executable. I've got this extra object file. Let's say I want to uh, clean up my directory a bit. What I can do is type make clean. That's going to remove all of the object files, all of the executable files, all of the debug executables and the profiling executables, as well as the submission files. Um, and so now if we type ls, we can see that we're back to just our normal directory structure. So make clean is super useful. I use it all the time. I think y'all should get in the, in the habit of using it. Um, but if it's not useful to you, don't worry about it. Um, OK, so now we've got our, our regular directory again. Now let's say I wanted to debug my program. Um, and uh, you might be you might want to do this to use something like Valgrind, which we'll go over in a different video. Um, but you could type make debug. And now that generates a different executable file, which we can see here, lab1 debug. And that'll just provide you a bit more information when you use debugging tools, um, such as trying to profile for, for time or memory, um, which is very useful. OK, or especially when trying to find seg faults. That's critical. OK, so. Let's make clean again. Um, now, the last thing that the make file does that's really handy is uh, prepares your files for submission. So if I do, let's start with, let's look at our directory. OK, let's start with make partial submit. Make partial submit uh, gave us a partial submit.tar.gz, which is what we call our tarball which is what you'll submit to the autograder. It's just like a zip file. And it included the files uh, makefile, sorting.h, and lab1.cpp, uh, which is great. But you'll notice that we have this test file here in the directory. So what make partial submit does 
is it bundles all of the files except for the testing files. And you can see that in the warning here. So that's really important. Um, if the partial submit uh, does not compile on the autograder, then it won't count as a submission for the day. If it does, then it will count and the test files weren't included, so you like you won't get the points for the tests. Um, so if you want to do a full submission, you can type make whoop, full submit. And that takes the make file, the sorting file, the lab one file, and also the test file. So it takes any file that begins with the four letters test. And now we have this full submit.tar.gz file, and that's what you can drag into the auto grader. Um, okay, so let's clean out our directory. Uh, the last thing that I think is super useful about the make file is that it will. Uh, it automates the process of pushing files to Kane, but we're going to talk about getting files to Kane in a different video, so I'm going to skip that for now. Okay, let's talk about uh, how we get the makefile to do what we want. Okay, now we're going to go over what you need to uh, change in the makefile to make it work for you. So you'll see throughout the makefile there's a couple places that have to-dos. Um, you can search for those, uh, such as here, and that'll take you right to the place you want to be. Um, but the first place is just uh, the first few lines of the file. So first thing we're going to do is change unique name to your uh, unique name to whatever your unique name is. Mine is Oliver High. Um, and this is going to be used to sync uh, your files to Kane. This is the project identifier. I've already put in the right one. This is from the project or lab spec. Um, and that's for the auto grader. Executable for this is just going to be called lab1 because I want to call it lab1, but it can be called whatever you want. On the projects and labs, generally we specify what the uh, executable has to be called so that we can uh, run your code on the autograder programmatically. Um, okay, so then that is the end of this make file. One thing you want to watch out for is that uh, this expression is fairly ugly, but uh, what it'll do is if you have project1.cpp or project2.cpp or something like that, or you have um, lab1.cpp, which is this executable.cpp, um, or even main.cpp, then it'll just find those and compile that into uh, the uh, executable file. Um, so if you call your project any of those things, the makefile will take care of it for you. Otherwise, what you want to do is go over here, project file. You can say, you know, Oliver's project one, something like that. Um, but for the most part, uh, this expression, this expression here will do it for you. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out again. Okay. Uh, so then there's uh, a bunch of make code that defines all of the different commands. Um, you know, these are variables in the make program. Uh, this is a command, so make release is a command. Uh, like make debug, like we saw earlier in the video, is a command. Make profile. Um, so these are all commands. Uh, and if you keep going down, you can see make clean here. Um, and this is just all stuff that you don't have to worry about. Full submit and partial submit are the uh, submit types that we went over earlier. Sync to Kane is crucially how you can sync your files to Kane with just the make file, uh, which I'll go over in just a second. Um, this is the make help. So if you type make help, that is the output you'll get. And then this is the the final to do. So this is the last thing that you want to look at. Um, so very briefly, dependencies are just any file that your program requires to run. So let's say in lab one, we have um, sorting.h and we also have lab1.cpp, right? So I would say I would have the executable uh, name, which is lab one, and the executable relies upon lab1.cpp also relies on sorting.h. Um, so this is perfectly fine and this will work and that's great. 
another way to do this would be, let's say there's a sorting class split across sorting.cpp and sorting.h. We could do uh, sorting.o depends on uh, sorting.cpp and it also depends on sorting.h. And then um, lab one executable would rely on, uh, let's call it lab1.cpp and sorting.o. And so um, you can see pretty much how that works. So this would, that would be without this line, um, where you're, you're compiling these class level objects together, and then finally you're bringing them all together in this expression. So you could have any number of these object files, and you could keep stringing them out beyond the executable. That's generally something uh, you want to do if, if you have a lot of different files that you're split between. If it's only you know three or four files, then I would just put them all in this this single list like um, like this. So yes. Uh, all right, so that's the dependencies. That's the last thing you need to take care of in this file. I'm just going to leave it like, oh yeah, we don't actually have a sorting.cpp, so I'm going to leave it like sorting.h. And um, that'll be fine. So that's all you have to do inside of the make file. And you get a whole bunch of functionality from that, and it's great. Um, so really briefly, I just want to show you how to use the make file to sync your uh, program to Kane. Let's see, I've got, I'm in my uh, project directory here on the left. I've got my make file, lab1.cpp, sorting.h, test.txt. And over on the right, I'm on my Kane account. I've already logged in, which I'll go over in a different video. Um, but you can see that right now there's, you know, I have some things that I put in there, but there's also just all of the normal stuff that would be on your account. Um, and now all I have to do is just say uh, make sync to Kane, and the script runs. Now if I go over here, I see that there's this eeks 281 lab one sync, uh, and you can see that that is where the make file says it's synced to. Um, so if we go into that, now we can see that I've got all four of my files here, just as I expect. I can run this again, no problem. Uh, if I, you know, if I change things in any of these files, um, then that's fine. I could change something in lab1.cpp. Um, like this, and then I can, you know, just immediately sync to Kane. And I can I can run on Kane. Um, okay, well, I didn't. <laughs> it's not defined, but it doesn't matter. So you you can you can immediately sync and run all these files. Um, so it's extremely handy. Uh, the last thing I want to show you about this is that if you are in your make file, and you go most of the way to the top where there's the identifier executable project file. Um, we can come down here and look at remote path. If I want to change the path that my files get synced to, we can do that easily. So we'll just do this. Okay, so that works fine. Um, and now if we go to documents, uh, there's this x281 see all my databases class stuff in there too. Um, there's a, a, our 281 folder and everything is there. So that is how the make file works and that's how you can sync your files to Kane and uh, I hope this was helpful. All right. Bye.